Get ready for Kirkland's inspired farmhouse DIYs. It's all the farmhouse charm you love, but at a fraction of the price. Plus, as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Anika, and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So today's video is one of my favorite types of videos. As you guys know, I love shopping, anthropology, Kirkland's. I love Target, that's my happy place. But if you've been following my channel for a while, you also know that I cannot afford the amount of things that I want from those places. So I love going to Dollar Tree, picking up some items and figuring out ways that I can get that same look for a much more affordable price. So today's video is all farmhouse items inspired by the Kirkland's catalog. Today's video is also a really fun video for me because it is my first time that I am participating in my friend Heidi Sambol's Friend Friday. So this is going to be a hop, which is going to be awesome for you guys. So after you watch my video, I want you to head down to the comments below and you will find a link for the next person in the hop. There are five people participate. <laughs> Why did I just hold up 10? <laughs> There are five channels participating in the hop today. So each of our videos is gonna lead you to the next person in the hop. So it's really fun. You don't know what you're gonna get next, but I can guarantee you that each step in the hop is gonna be fun. So don't forget to check that out. If you're new here or if you're visiting from the hop, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please go ahead and subscribe. Everybody hit that notification bell so you'll be ready when my next video comes out and give this video a big thumbs up and leave me a comment letting me know which DIY was your favorite. Okay guys, it's time to craft. So as I was window shopping the Kirkland's catalog, this caught my eye. I love the shape of it and the simplicity of it, but not the $30 price tag. So I grabbed these three mirrors from Dollar Tree and I'm going to try to recreate it for a fraction of the price. So what you're gonna to need to do is remove the backing and the glass mirror out from the frame and we're going to paint it brown. I used the Waverly chalk paint truffle color and I just painted the entire thing. After that, I went back with this mineral and plaster colored paint and I just dry brushed that right onto my brown paint. So what this did was it gave it a little bit of dimension and gave it a little bit of that wood look. So what you wanna do when you're doing this is get a little bit of paint on your paintbrush, brush it, most of it off onto a paper towel or a napkin. That's why it's called dry brushing. You want your brush to be almost completely dry and then go in one direction around and it looks like wood grain. If you get too much, that's okay. You can just go back through with some brown. Now I had some ribbon on hand, so I decided which one I wanted to use. And what I did was I just laid it across all three of my frames, gave it a few extra inches just to make sure that I had enough because it's much easier to cut off the little bit extra than it is to have to start over because you didn't cut enough. So I added probably two or three extra inches and cut it off. Next, I noticed that on the back side of these frames, there's a lot of symmetry. There's little knobs in there that are right across from each other. So that made it really easy for me to get this ribbon nice and straight. So I started by gluing it on the inside of the back of the frame and then on the top and bottom edges of the frame. Now you wanna make sure that you cover that entire part of the frame because this is going to be hanging, all the weight of the bottom two frames are gonna be hanging on that first one. So you wanna make sure that you get every part of the frame that's gonna be in contact with that ribbon so that way it can support the weight and it won't fall down on you. Now when it came to the bottom, I was able to look and find the little knob that was directly across from the one that I started at, and that helped me to get my ribbon nice and straight. Now I glued it on the inside and then the outside of the bottom edge, and my first frame was finished. Now I decided that I wanted about an inch between my frames, so I got out my ruler and I just kind of eyeballed it, kind of used the ruler. It doesn't have to be perfect, you guys, just as long as it basically looks like the same distance. Because you want the same distance between the first and second frame and then the second and third frame. And now I'm just gonna repeat the same process. I'm going to 
glue my ribbon on the top outer edge of the second frame and then I'm going to carry it around to the inner edge and come down and do the bottom and then I'm going to repeat the process one more time with my third frame. And that was it. Next, it was time to add my greenery. Now, I already had some greenery on hand. I also had some twine on hand and this ribbon. So, all together, this DIY cost me $3, but I'll say it cost four just because I did use little snippets of other things that I had previously gotten from Dollar Tree. So, I'm just going to take my greenery and hot glue it right onto the bottom of my frame. Next, I'm going to take some twine and I'm just going to wrap it all the way around my picture frame, covering up the bottom stem of my greenery. Now, you guys know I love twine. That's probably why this DIY caught my eye, but I love this little detail on this project. It's the tiniest thing, but it is just so simple and beautiful, and I love the farmhouse feel of it. Next, I need some of these little mini clothespins so that I can hang my pictures or my cards or whatever I decide to hang on it. So instead of painting it the solid truffle color, I decided to do more of a bit of a stain. So what I did was I combined 50% water and 50% paint and I just painted all over my clothespins. I think this gave it a really nice look. It doesn't look exactly like the picture frames, but you can tell that it matches. And then I'm just gonna hot glue those right onto the top of my ribbon. And that's it guys. I love how this came out and for basically three to four dollars, I have this Kirkland's inspired piece that looks perfect on my wall in my living room and I'm just in love with it. So next, I wanted to recreate this milk jug, but <laughs> not for $30. So I did a little research and I found a way to come up with it for much, much less. So I got this large jar from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to put some hot glue all the way around it and I'm going to attach this bowl. Now these bowls came in a set of two so that's great. They were only 50 cents a piece and one was already smaller than the other and I loved the way that looked. So I'm going to stack the first bowl upside down on my container and then the second bowl is going to go right on top right side up. After I've done that, I'm going to paint it and I decided to use this plaster color. I've seen a lot of these in white, so if you want it to be white, then that's an option too. I like, when I'm making things look, look aged, I like to make sure that they're not completely white and that's just a preference of mine, but whatever you like, you should go with that. Next, I found these little rollers at Dollar Tree and I decided to use these for the handles. They have wire inside and were perfect for shaping. Now go ahead and bend your roller, but make sure it's the shape that you want it to be before you paint it. Because once you paint it, if you manipulate it too much, you're gonna disturb some of the paint. Now I had a little bit of an overwhelmed mom moment there and I actually forgot to record the part where I glued this onto my milk jug. But I want you to take a look at those little white knobs at the end of the um, the rollers because that's the part that you need to glue. If you put it on the roller part, the styrofoam, it's going to melt. So make sure when you glue it on, you get it directly onto that plastic part. Now, after I glued it on, I wanted it to have a little bit of a welded look. So I put some hot glue around that on purpose so that it would look like these were welded on. Once again, that's just a little design element that I thought would be cute. You don't really have to do that at all. And then I'm going to go back and just paint right over that. And I did make sure that I put some extra paint in any spaces that were kind of a gap. And then that way it filled in the gap for me. Next, I'm going to tear off a little bit of this sponge and we're going to make this look aged and distressed. I want to tear off any of the sharp edges and have it be a little more round than square. And that'll make sure that there are no sharp um, shapes on this, but more organic, rusty looking shapes. 
So what I did was I used a little bit of this gray paint and honestly this was some black and white paint that I had mixed for another project and I just used what I had left of that. And I just carefully dabbed all around with my sponge in places where you would normally see it be distressed. So at the edges, on corners, at the handles, things like that. And I gave it a little bit of a worn out and rusty look. Now my inspiration piece had some detailing in the jug that my container did not have. So I decided to put some letters on it instead. I used these stickers that I got from Dollar Tree. Of course you could always use your Cricut or you can use the pencil technique to stencil on a graphic that you'd like and then paint that with black paint. But I'm just using these stickers and I'm using that seam right down the middle of the container to line up my letters and make sure that they're nice and straight. So that was a really convenient way to make these look nice and even. So I'm just going to peel off my stickers and carefully stick them onto my jug. And then afterwards, if you'd like, you can go back with something to seal it. They stuck pretty well for me, so I didn't need that, but I may go back and do that later. So I just added my letters and that was it. This DIY came together so much more quickly than I thought and looked so much better than I even imagined. I'm so happy that I put it together and for the price, you can't beat it. So for my last DIY, I wanted to recreate this flower wall decor, but not for $50. I cannot believe that's how much it cost. So I got this picture from Dollar Tree. I actually think I picked this one up around Valentine's Day, but they have the same frame with different pictures in it all throughout the year. I'm going to pop out the picture and I'm going to use this to cut off the edges to make that little wood detailing in the corner of the pictures. So in order to do that evenly, I'm going to go ahead and make an X right across the back of my picture frame. This is going to let me know where the middle of each corner is. After I've done that, I'm going to make a two inch line across the bottom and I'm going to make sure that my one inch mark lines up exactly with my lines that I drew my X. This is just going to ensure that all four of my triangles are the same shape and size. Once I've got them all marked off, I'll just cut them off with some scissors. And now it's time to paint the frame. So I'm just gonna use that same truffle brown paint to paint my picture frame. Now you wanna make sure that you get all sides of this and the inside because you're gonna be able to see all of that once our final project is completed. We're also going to paint our little triangles, making sure that the long side of the triangle is also painted brown. Next, I went to my kitchen and I grabbed a pack of bamboo skewers. Now I'm going to paint these black and you definitely want to use the bamboo skewers instead of the wooden craft dowels because these bamboo ones, they bend a little bit more easily, which we're going to need a little bit later in our project. Now in order to do the wood grain detailing, I just used that same black that I had out and I also added some of this mineral chalk paint for a little contrast. I added the black into it just to darken it up a little bit and I did the same dry brushing technique that we used on the previous project just to give that wood grained effect. And don't forget to put that same detail on your triangles. So after we're done with that, we're ready for the flower. I got this from Dollar Tree. It was in the garden section and it was only a dollar for this beautiful flower. I can't believe it. So what I'm gonna do is after taking off the parts that were hanging, I'm gonna just fill in the hole with a little bit of hot glue. So that way when I paint it, you won't be able to see the hole. I'm going to come back through with my plaster chalk paint and I'm going to paint this flower. Now if you want a pop of color you could totally leave it the color that it is. I was going for the vibe of the inspiration piece so I went ahead and painted this and I think I like it both ways so it just depends on your mood. All it needed was two to three coats of this chalk paint and then it was ready to distress. So in order to do that, I just took the plaster that I had left over, added a little bit of black to it, and that gave me a nice gray color. This was perfect for me to go around the edges of my flower and give it that distressed look. 
make sure that you're using the dry brush technique so that you're not getting too much of a heavy hand on this but don't worry if you make a spot that's a little too dark you can always go back over it with the plaster color again just to soften up that color those of us who make youtube videos have the power of editing so we can edit out some of those mistakes that we make but everyone makes them so don't worry when it comes to paint you can always just paint over it if you do too much and now it's time to put everything together. So we're gonna turn our frame upside down on the table and I'm just gonna glue my triangles right into this little ledge that's already in the frame. If you want your triangles to be flush with the front of the frame, you could do that too. That would be a cute look. I just went the easy route and put this right back in the indentation that was already there from the picture that came with the frame. Next, I'm going to grab my bamboo skewers and I'm just going to mark off exactly where I need to cut them and then I'm going to cut both of them down to size. Once I have that done, I'm ready to just make a crisscross shape right across the back of my picture frame. Now, this is why the bamboo skewers are a little bit better than the wooden crafting dowels because the bamboo has a little bit of give to it. That second skewer that you put on, you're gonna have to hold it on there and give it a little bit of bend until your hot glue dries because it's going over that front one. So it's just a little bit easier to do it this way with the bamboo. Now once I have that on there, I realized that my flower doesn't exactly touch the bamboo where I need to glue it on. So in order to get around that, I just grabbed two little wooden beads and you can use whatever you have on hand. That's the right size. I bet you could even just use some paper that you roll up tightly to make a little bead shape. And I just glued them right onto my dowels on the bottom one. So the one that's a little bit further away from my flower. And this was perfect. Now it made contact with the inside of that flower and I was able to just put some hot glue right on the sides where I needed it and then on the middle on my, um, on my little beads and it held very securely this way. So you guys, I'm kind of obsessed with how easy this was to put together and how beautifully it came out. I think I might grab some different flowers, paint them different colors and do four or five more of these. <laughs> I absolutely love all of those DIYs. I think they have the look and feel of the inspiration pieces, but for a fraction of the price. Head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. So for today's treat, because the theme was farmhouse, that always just gets me reminiscing about summers at my grandma and grandpa's house. And I remember shelling peas from the garden just for hours. They would bring like buckets of them for the kids and just plop us right down and make us shell all the peas. And those are really good memories. But I also remember my grandma waking up early every morning and making fresh biscuits or fresh bread for us. And whatever was left over, she would put it in a little tin. And then once or twice a week, she would take all those scraps or all those stale pieces of bread and she would make bread pudding for us. And it was just absolutely my favorite part of the week. So this is not her recipe. This is kind of how I do it. It can never taste the same as grandma's, but this is my quick version that I like to do for my kids and I wanted to share it with you guys. So it's time to eat. We're going to take a baking dish and spray it with some nonstick spray. Next, I'm gonna break up some bread. I think this is some cinnamon breakfast bread that I had that was becoming stale, but you can use whatever kind of bread you have on hand to make this dish. You need probably about six to eight slices of bread, but you can kind of feel it out to see how much or how little you like to make your pudding. Next, we're gonna add some melted butter, which you can never go wrong with melted butter. Now, here's where you can tell that I learned to cook from my grandma because I kind of feel some things out and some of this deviates from the recipe. So I'll give you the recipe, but you can also make my changes or do what makes you feel happy. So we're going to add some eggs, some milk, we need some sugar, and I like to use brown sugar in combination with the white sugar, and I add some spices to mine. I like to add nutmeg, ginger, cloves, and a little bit of cinnamon. Now I'm gonna just add a touch of vanilla extract, and I'm going to combine that all together. This comes together really quickly, and you can really just make it to your taste. Whatever you like to put in it, that's what you can put in. You can also add raisins at this point. There is some 
arguments over whether raisins belong in this in my house so I tend to just put them on top instead of in the pudding so that those of us who like it can have it and those of us who are wrong i.e my husband can just pick it off the top <laughs> so we're gonna pour our mixture right onto our bread I'm adding my raisins right on top and I also like to add some chocolate chips. You want to make sure you press your bread down and that all parts of your bread have a little bit of that mixture to soak into it. And once you've got that all together, you're going to bake it in the oven and come out with this deliciousness. Now you could eat this for breakfast or you could put some ice cream on it, whatever you want. It is so good. I hope you guys try it. I hope you enjoyed these Kirkland's inspired farmhouse DIYs that I had for you today. Don't forget to head down to the comments and let me know which one was your favorite. Also, give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to head down to the description box to find the next step in the hop. These are some amazing crafters and you will not be disappointed. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.